Did you ever wish there was such a thing as a reset button for life? I mean, you've really messed your life up. You're in a situation where you really don't know what to do. You don't know who to turn to. Well, I'm going to share some scriptures with you today uh, about God's divine reset button. You can have a new life. Let me tell you about this. In the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, we read, it says here, And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus Christ didn't come for good people. He came for people that are bad, that need a new life, that wish there was a reset button. You see, that's the purpose of him dying on the cross. Share another scripture with you here. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should after, hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. That was written by the Apostle Paul, a man that used to actually hunt down Christians and kill them. Are you worse than that? I'm not sure who I'm talking to in this video, whoever you're watching. Maybe you have done some really horrible, awful things. But the Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Do you understand that you're a sinner? You say that's a message of, of condemnation and judgment. It's a message of condemnation and judgment so that you will find the solution and get healed. See, it's not just you're a sinner, you're wicked, and you're finished. No, no. God is willing to give you a brand new life. All you have to do is come to Him as a sinner. I'll tell you the other steps here as we continue. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, let's read this. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Jesus Christ suffered one time for sins. Right? The Roman Catholic system, the very wicked system that it is, says Jesus Christ has to be sacrificed again and again and again and again. And you'll never know for sure that you're saved, that you're going to go to heaven when you die, because you have to die in a state of grace. What does that mean? You have to continue to do good works the whole way through your life, and you'll never know for certain. That's a lie. Jesus Christ died once for sins. He died on the cross to pay for your sins. Let's continue. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you looking for rest? Are you looking for peace? Have, are you sick and tired of this world just tossing you around and just knocking you around, beating you around, and everybody's using you and abusing you and and just, who do you trust? Jesus Christ. See, what about you? Don't trust me. Trust Jesus and His Word, this King James Bible for English-speaking Christians. That's who you trust. He died for your sins, friend. That's what the truth is. And it says here, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And what's the rest? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The Lord will tell you what to do with your life. See, that's the real problem here. That's why you've gotten messed up so much in your life. That's the reason I got messed up before I was saved, before I became born again as a Christian. The whole thing is, when I did it my way, when I did what felt good, I messed up and I ruined my life. And I got to a point where I wanted that reset button. I wanted to start over. And the Lord Jesus Christ will give you that opportunity if you come to Him in faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. Paul, writing here to the believers in Corinth, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, 
if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Two things you need to understand there. Number one, this is the standard, the Scriptures. This tells you what salvation is all about. Number two, unless you have believed in vain. You know, there's a lot of people out there that profess to be Christians, and they've believed in vain. They never came to the Lord as a sinner. They've never needed that reset button. All they wanted to do was be part of a social club called a church building, and that's why they've come for salvation. They go into this building here, and they, and they get invited in, and they hear the pretty music and everything else, and they get caught up in the moment, and they say, I want to be a Christian, and they do whatever they're told to do in that particular building, you know? And what happens, they believe in vain. Why? Because they didn't come as a sinner. You see? Jesus Christ did not come for good people, for religious people, for faithful church attendees, for those who have been baptized and confirmed. He came for sinners. Are you a sinner? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It doesn't say might be, it says shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross? You say, well, I, I, I can't see it. That's why it's faith. Faith, faith is the substance of things uh, not seen. Paraphrasing the verse in Hebrews. You're supposed to come to the Lord in faith, believing that Jesus Christ's death on the cross can pay for your sins. He came for sinners, you see? And you come and you say, I believe that. I do believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. That's, that's the answer I've been looking for all my life. That's what I've been trying to find. I want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. What's next? Talk to God. Ask Him. Ask Him to save you. Come to Him in, with a believing heart and say, I believe Jesus died for my sins. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Call upon Him. You say, is it going to work? The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, it'll work. Absolutely. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Friend, you can know. You can know and have a written record. The Bible, the Word of God, you can know that you're going to go to heaven when you die, and you can have a new life. What will happen when you get saved, genuinely saved, when you are truly born again, because you've come as a sinner, in a, in a repentant state, the Bible talks about. Jesus said, I come to call sinners to repentance. That means that you're turning from your self-righteousness. You don't say, hey, I'm a good person. I'm not that bad. Oh, no. No. You understand that you're a sinner. And you understand that you could never work your way to heaven. And you say, this life I've lived, I don't want this life anymore. I want a new life. I want that reset button. That's repentance. And you come and you say, you know what? I hear the gospel. Jesus died for me according to the scriptures. I'm going to believe that by faith. I can't see it, so it has to be by my faith. So I believe the gospel. And then you call out to the Lord and you say, Lord, God, please save me. The best way you know how. There's no specific little prayer that's re recorded in this book that tells you exactly what to pray. Just ask God to save you for Jesus' sake. See, I put my faith in Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed on that cross. He died a terrible death to pay for your sins. You can read about it in this King James Bible. And you see, when you accept the Lord as your you know, Savior, 
what will happen is you'll have an assurance because you got it from the Bible. You didn't get it from my denomination or my church building or because you sent $50 in within the next 10 minutes and you get a free little bottle of holy water or something like this. Uh-uh, no. It's based on the Bible. God's divine reset button is based upon this book and what this book says. And this is your birth certificate when you're born again. And what will happen is the Lord is going to come into your life and He's going to start to change your feelings and your attitudes about things and your life is going to change. My life changed. I was a very wicked man before I got saved. God changed everything for me. And He can do the same thing for you. So, it all depends on your feelings, really, when it comes right down to it. If you want to change life, if you're sick and tired of the way things are going in your life right now, Come to God as a sinner. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Call out to Him and say, God, please save me. And you'll be born again. But if you're not quite uh, fed up with this world and you just want a little bit more time in the bars and the strip clubs and the drugs and the whatever other things that you enjoy, if you want that, you're not ready to be saved. If you have not come to the end of yourself, you're not ready to be saved. And you see, that's the majority of professing Christians. They have a belief, but it's in vain. They don't want to give up this world. They haven't had enough of it yet. But if you've had enough of this world and you say, you know what, I'm on a, I'm on a crash course right now. I can see my destruction coming. I could see that years ago. I was into extreme motorsports. I was headed for destruction. I would go, I went 175 miles an hour on the street the one time on my street bike usually would go 100 to 150 miles an hour over posted speed limits many times. I was headed for destruction. And I got to the point where I was broken and I said, you know what, I don't want this life anymore. God, please save me. I know Jesus died on the cross for me. If you'll save me, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. And here I am. Please do the same.